Hello everybody, my name is Joshua and I'd like to welcome you back to another episode of Coffee, Cats, and King, where we discuss books, both new and old. I will share with you pictures of my cats, will make you wish they were your cats, and I will drink enough coffee for me and everybody watching. My mug today says Joshua. Read the steely exterior beats the heart of a dashing hero. Would have helped if that focused at all during that whole time, but it did not. And that's okay because the mug is lying anyway. Uh, there's no dashing hero heart in this chest. There is, however, the heart of a man that very much enjoys his literature and is very excited to share some more of that today with you. Uh, my shirt is one of my Twilight Zone shirts from the episode The Invaders. Great episode. Uh, somewhere around here, there he is. We have our special guest back today, Havoc. Hey, don't walk away from the camera. Come here. You gonna help me again today? No, you wanna help, won't you? Go ahead. Make up your mind. We have a video to film. You gonna help me or are you gonna go? Come on. Havoc. <laughs> oh, good gravy. All right. We're gonna film then, okay? We're gonna film. You gotta help me out, okay? You gotta help me out. You gotta help me feel. We're gonna talk about a couple books today, aren't we? Yes, tell them all about it. All right, well, as I said, we're gonna talk about uh, a couple books today. Um, <clears throat> so, all the way back in... All the way back in October, uh, just before Halloween, I had a man reach out to me, uh, the owner of Capricorn Literary. And uh, this is a, a smaller company that is producing uh, audiobooks of uh, some older horror and uh, doing a really great job with it. Uh, they have some great stuff and I was very thankful. He reached out to me and offered me uh, three of their audiobooks, which was super cool. Uh, then a bunch of stuff happened. Uh, I went through some, some rough things uh, mentally, physically. Uh, we had to move and just all kinds of stuff going on. <clears throat> and so it took me forever to get through these three audiobooks. And I finally got through them. I wanted to be able to talk to him, uh, talk about them some. Uh, so. This review today is going to be about the book itself and also talking about uh, the audio portion, talking about how the particular narrator did. Um, now, I don't have the names of these narrators. I probably should have written that down, but I didn't. Uh, however, if you, uh, if you go on their website um, or go through their catalog, then you will, of course, find these same books. Uh, now, like I said, there were three. I'm actually only really talking about two books today. Uh, one of them was uh, D.A. Fowler's The Devil's Night. <clears throat> and I love D.A. Fowler. Um, so I'm actually saving... Uh, oh, jeez. He has gotten up on top of the bookshelf where you have no business being. Isn't that right? Why are you up there? You can't do anything up there. You can't even get down. Ah, oh, Judas Priest. Havoc. What the heck, man? He has never done this before. <sighs> Apparently he has determined that this video is not going to be about books. It is going to be about him. Hey. Yes, that's a cobweb, and now it's on your nose. Don't eat it! Gosh dang it. <sighs> I 
I have said it many times before, I will say it again. Having havoc is like having a perpetual toddler that can jump 10 feet in the air. All right, buddy. I think it's time to get down. There's nothing for you up there. You ate a cobweb, ate a dead spider. Let's come on down and talk about books, okay? Come on. Come on, buddy. Let's go. Alright, well, have a cool join us when he's ready. Um, as I was saying, I'm not going to talk about the DA Fowler today because uh, I kind of want to do a video just on Miss Fowler. Um, suffice it to say that if you are looking for a great uh, audiobook, a great horror, then Devil's Night is an excellent one. Miss um, Fowler is an incredible author. She always writes a fantastically fun novel. Oh, and he's back. Hi, buddy. There he is. Good boy. <clears throat> Alright, so the two books that I am going to talk about today, both of them, again, from Capricorn Literary. And one of them was absolutely atrocious. Uh, both the book and the narration of it, so... You're going to hear a lot about that. Uh, the other one, the narration was uh, pretty good, and the book itself was uh, pretty good. I think it gave it four stars. So I'm going to start with the one star, with the one that I could not stand, um, and that was John Russo's The Awakening. I'll put a little picture up over here, of course. Uh, for those that don't know, John Russo is supposedly the man that wrote the script for the original Night of the Living Dead. After, after listening to this book, um, I don't know that I can believe that because um, this is easily the worst vampire novel uh, that I have read. If not, period, then uh, in a long enough period of time that I cannot remember reading a worse vampire novel. So that should tell you something. Um, on top of that, the narration was atrocious. This was the absolute worst narrator I've ever had the experience of listening to. Um, and, you know, I hate saying that in this video again because uh, these books were offered to me by Capricorn Literary, but um, I always give an honest opinion and I feel like I need to do that now. Um, so, the book itself, The Awakening, uh, as I said, is a vampire novel. It is about a man who wakes up um, about 100, 120 years uh, after he's died. Uh, wakes up revived again um, as a vampire. The reasoning behind his revival um, is quite silly and never explained very well, but uh, basically the majority of the book <clears throat> the majority of the book is him trying to adjust to life uh, this 100, 120 years later. Uh, my main my main issues, among other things, uh, man, one, the book is just incredibly repetitive. I mean, it's, it's like every 20 pages you hear the exact same thing from this guy. Like, oh, I can, uh, I can drain blood out of people and make myself stronger, but what am I? Uh, certainly I'm not a vampire because vampires aren't real. Um, oh, hey look, I'm naked and I don't have a belly button in any, anymore and my body looks like it has reverse aged uh, to a point where I'm a young, strong man again. But hey, there's nothing supernatural or weird about that. Um, and oh, I'm not going to question why I'm awake 120 years later. Clearly I'm still human and I'm still normal. 
uh, and you just keep hearing these things over and over and it's like the man will not accept that obviously something weird went on uh, obviously he's a vampire and it just I don't know it's weird it's it's just this continuous refusal on his part to uh, accept what's going on now Havoc has decided he wants out, sorry. So yeah, it's like this guy has this, uh, this refusal to accept what has happened, uh, but it is written so poorly that it's just the same boring inner dialogue over and over and over again. And like I said, he'll do something. He will, uh, he will basically mind control someone. And then afterwards, it's, 15 pages of him pondering on how he just made that happen and well it's nothing supernatural um, I just suggested it and for some reason he decided to do it and it's just so stupid and silly um, and it, this is basically the whole book up until the last probably uh, third maybe the last quarter and then suddenly it's thrown in that oh hey actually the whole reason behind all of this uh, is that you have a modern-day ancestor who is a serial killer that we're just going to throw in at the very end of the book here, and now it's your job to take him out. So, like I said, it's just, it's so awful. It's so bad. Uh, the writing is horrible. The dialogue is just atrocious. Everything about this book just sucks. Um, and maybe I could have laughed some of it off had the narrator been decent but uh, I said this was just my least favorite narrator I've ever listened to and I've listened to books narrated by Gilbert Godfrey uh, so I feel like that's saying something um, I'm going to give you a perfect example of what I had to deal with listening to this man through this entire audiobook okay um, this is not an exact scene that happens but it is pretty darn close. From behind him, Lathan heard somebody or something walking. As he turned, he realized there were three black youths behind him. Hey bro, what you got in your pockets? The first said in a menacing manner. A second took a step towards him. We don't want any trouble, man. We just, like, want your money, but we can hurt you if we have to. Latham, confused and angry, warned them, You should probably step back. I don't want to hurt you, but you don't want to do this. Yo, man, don't tell me what I want to do. Give me your money, and there ain't no problem. End scene. I wish I was exaggerating, but that's exactly how it goes. So, the narrator uh, has a strong British accent. Despite the fact that the only British character uh, in the book is the main character, um, everything else takes place in America in the 80s, I believe. So, every other character, uh, that is the voice he uses for. It doesn't matter who the character is, every other character in the book, that is the voice he uses for him. Just a simple monotone that is just atrocious. This guy, not only does he use this same awful voice for all of his American characters, uh, but he, he gets the pronunciations wrong on so many words. Uh, uses the British the British pronunciation, but in this American accent, and it's just man, it makes me smack my head to have to listen to because it is so bad. And somebody listened to this and thought that it was okay uh, to put this out as an audiobook. Um, all of his m female characters have the same voice, and it is again just terrible. Now. Most of the time, when you have a male narrator, you're not going to get a decent female voice, okay? We all know that. 
Uh, most of them try, they try to cut it down and go for the breathy, you know. Oh, but Mr. Latham, you know, that sort of thing. He, oh, his is just awful. I, I'm not even going to try to repeat the way he does it, uh, but it's terrible. It doesn't sound like a woman at all. Um, it sounds like a man doing a poor impression of a woman. And unfortunately, you have to listen to a lot of this all through the audiobook, uh, including sex scenes which get really nasty. Uh, to listen to this man, it just, oh man. I, that little scene I played out for you there, that is just about verbatim what you hear in this audiobook. And it's just so bad. Uh, and like I said, the, the other issue is that the writing is so horrible to begin with that, you know, you, you can't get past the writing and then you can't get past the narration. So the whole thing is just atrocious. It's awful. I cannot recommend it to anybody. Uh, the book or the narration. Can't recommend either one of them. It's terrible. Do not read John Russo's The Awakening. Do not listen to John Russo's The Awakening. Avoid it at all costs. Just about any vampire novel that you pick up is going to be better. Now, um, I want to talk about one of the others that they sent me, however. Uh, one that was a much better experience. Let me get a little sip of coffee first, though. <clears throat> Alright, so one of the other books that Capricorn Literary sent me was Jeff Rovin's Vespers. <clears throat> and like I said, this was all around a much better experience. Uh, the narrator was so much better. I still had some issues with him. Um, again, his, his female voices were pretty terrible. Um, but he gave it a little more liveliness, for one. Um, he wasn't bland and boring like the other guy. He did give it a little liveliness, gave it a little flavor. Um, and you could tell that he was having a good time with it. So that counts for something. Um, on a one to five scale, I'd give him about a three, three and a half in regards to his narration. I didn't have any issues with that. Wasn't the best I've heard, but uh, certainly far from the worst. Um, overall, pretty good there. And uh, if you were interested in this book, interested in listening to this book, this is one that I would suggest picking up from Capricorn Literary. Now, the book itself, uh, Vespers, is about bats. And a lot of people have a major fear of bats. Uh, if you're one of those people, then uh, this book is absolutely going to get under your skin. And if you're not one of those people, um, well, it might still get under your skin, but you're also going to learn a lot about bats, uh, and you're going to have just an enjoyable read all around. Um, it's not a particular scary novel. It's just good old-fashioned animal attack horror. So the book starts out at a baseball game where a bunch of people are attacked by this, uh, this seemingly random uh, swarm of bats. And they come out of nowhere. Uh, there are so many of them that you can't just knock them away and run. Uh, there are people being mauled by these little guys and knocked on the ground. And it's just this crazy intense scene. And basically it just keeps happening. So all around this city uh, are all these bat attacks and they can't figure out why. They can't figure out what's going on. Now this book has a fairly decent sized cast, uh, including some reporters who uh, are, you know, kind of off and on trying to get the scoop on what's going on. You're introduced to this woman, uh, this doctor that works at the zoo who is a specialist uh, in regards to bats. Um, of course, no one wants to uh, take her seriously because she's a woman, but she proves time and time again that they need to be listening to her. Um, eventually, some people do, and it is absolutely for the best for them. And then, of course, you have our main protagonist. Uh, he is a police officer, but he actually works for... Uh, what's it called? Um... Something like transportation, so he investigates, uh, you know, car accidents, uh, occurrences on the subway, that sort of thing. Nothing crazy. He's gotten uh, out of homicides in that where he used to be um, and uh, where he used to be an undercover cop. 
uh, gotten all, out of all of that, uh, trying to get on the side of things where uh, everything's just a little more relaxed, uh, doesn't exactly work out well for him because then he gets caught up in this crazy bat attack situation and takes it upon himself to figure out what's going on. So, um, the book itself, uh, like I said, it's not going to win any awards here, but uh, overall it is a very fun book um, and one that I will definitely suggest people. The writing is not always the greatest. Um, there is... And there's a particular character at the end of the book, um, and this was actually my biggest issue with the narrator. Uh, there's one character in the book, it seems like every time he's in there, the narrator gives him a different voice, and then at the end, he gives him this voice that's, uh, it's almost borderline racist. Uh... But at the same time, the writing kind of flows in that way. Um, it'll make sense if you listen to it. That character, uh, his name is T-Bone. I had an issue with him. Didn't like the characterization. Um, I thought it got pretty ridiculous, especially at the end of the book. Uh, but aside from that, all the characters are fairly enjoyable. And the narrator does a good job of uh, dif differentiating between them to the best visibility uh, and uh, like I said if you're looking for just good classic uh, animal attack kind of horror then uh, this is a good one for you and if you're into giant monsters or giant animals uh, well stick around because this book is not going to disappoint so <clears throat> uh, that one gets four stars from me and about three stars in regards to the narration uh, the Awakening, one star all around, only because I can't give it anything less. Um, worst vampire novel I've ever read. I don't know what happened there. Uh, the narration was just atrocious. I absolutely could do better uh, in a day or two. And uh, D.A. Fowler's The Devil's End... Again, I'll be talking about Miss Fowler in a separate video, but as far as this one goes, the book is five stars, the narration is five stars. Uh, highly suggested if you want to pick one up from Capricorn, pick up that or pick up Vespers. Both of them will give you a good time. So, I want to thank Capricorn Literary. I apologize that it has taken me so long to get to this. I also apologize that I had to give uh, one of your audiobooks such a poor score. But again, um, I try to be as honest as possible in these things. Um, and I hope, to, I hope to listen to some of your others in the future because I think you guys are doing great things. Um, I love that you're bringing back some, uh, some horror that a lot of people did not get the chance to read back in the day, but absolutely should be read. And uh, I will be looking forward to listening to some more of the audiobooks that you guys produce. So, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoy. Um, I hope this isn't too scattered with the uh, uh, situation that we had with Havoc. Um, I'm trying to get him on here more, trying to get Chaos on here more too, but that is a really difficult one to do. Uh, but that'll do it for today. Again, hope you enjoy. Uh, let me know what you think below of any of these books. Michael K. Vaughn, I know you don't count audiobooks as uh, reading, but uh, for me, I spend over an hour a day uh, driving back and forth as far as, uh, to, to get to work. So it's just a good way for me to get books in and i do think it counts especially because most of the audiobooks i listen to are books that i have read previously i'm just listening to them now so give me your thoughts and opinions on that below guys uh, again thank you for joining me have a great day stay safe drink awesome coffee <sighs> cheers